Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Come on, can we give Jesus some praise in this place, everybody? Come on, this is none other than the house of God. God is moving today. God is speaking to your hearts. There's a Super Bowl coming, but there's a super life for you in the name of Jesus. God is gonna speak over your life. He's gonna give you a word. Your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. We honor. We give you the praise and the glory. In your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. 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 Remain standing just for another 30 seconds, please. I just want to say, I know you're about to, you're about to do a, a mini air squat right there. I've seen everybody jerk like that. Um, I, I want to say thank you to, I know Pastor Jurgen and Pastor Leanne will probably, ev- might not, or might be eventually watch this video. I just want to let you know, and I want to tell them that I am so grateful for them. True friendship is tested and forged in fire. And the COVID scandemic, whatever you want to call it, I call it that, actually made our friendship stronger. And you can tell your, the quality of your life by the five people that are the closest to you. They say that you are the average of the people, the five people that you hang out with. So start thinking about your, 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 your friends. And I think I'm in good company. Can I get an amen? I am so grateful for Pastor Jurgen and Leanne. And I'm so blessed by them. Their generosity, their power, their anointing, their prophetic. They are the tip of the spear. They're, gonna, they're, they're amazing. I'm so grateful for them. And I'm also thankful for John and Becky Heinrichs, who I've known as well. And so blessed by them. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Can we thank the Lord one more time, everybody, before we take our seats? Amen. Amen. Before we have a seat, give somebody a high five, fist bump, elbow, chicken wing, hug something to somebody around you, and tell them, hey, after the playoffs, you're taking me to lunch. I, 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 I've been made aware, I've been made aware that there is a playoff game today playoff game today and some of you like I hope he goes I hope he goes short today not happening not happening but I'm not going long but I'm not going long no, I'm not going long I came here just with a word that was on an invitation and I'm grateful for my friends uh, who are here guy Monique Taylor uh, I'm grateful for um, my cousin Tail who is here with his wife Lori and their beautiful family it is an honor for them to be here thank you everybody I'm glad that you're here today I'm glad that you're here today I just come from Hawaii. I'm a humble, <laughs> yeah, I am humble, but I'm loud. I'm loud, humble. And I'm from the island of Hawaii, the big island. I was born and raised in a small town of 2,000 people, graduating class of 120. And I'm just a testimony of what God can do when you surrender your life to him and where he can take you. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can imagine the things God has for those who love him. In other words, God can blow your mind if you let him, if you let him in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I could go on and on, but he's playing the keys, and I'm more anointed the more he plays. So you are doing awesome. And I'll see you in the next, in a few moments, okay? Can we give, give him a hand, everybody? Amen. Okay, I got a word to deliver. I want you to open your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 5, if you brought your Bibles here today. 2 Kings chapter 5, and I'm going to preach a message that uh, I preached at the last service. I love this passage of Scripture. I find new things every time I look through it. And uh, it, it, I, I believe it's apropos for the days that we live in today. Um, you, you'll see a lot of parallels in um, in. Um, in in history, you'll see parallels that are happening today in the world and in the Middle East, but you'll also see some parallels possibly in your own life and in, that I see in my life as well. Uh, the kingdom of Israel has been split in two. You realize that? They had a civil war, so a separation of sorts. Um, you had, the, it is in this 
chaotic time that the nation of Israel has two. They split in two. You have Israel. They retained the name to the north, and you've got Judah to the south. Uh, Israel kept, out of the 12 tribes, kept 10, and they were pagan worshipers now. They no longer worshiped Yahweh. They made their own capital. They made their own place of worship called Samaria. And to the south, you still got David's remnant who is holding it down uh, in Jerusalem, and they are the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, every year, they would get together on a hill. They would yell, we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you, right? So uh, the ones that had the right spirit, the Holy Spirit, were leading down south, but the ones in the north had already given to the detestable idols of pagan worship, which include uh, child sacrifice, which include the death, not just the death penalty, but uh, more than that. It was sacrifice. It was worship in child sacrifice. All of that was going on in that place. But in the midst of all of that, God still sees that he has a heart for his people. He is still brokenhearted. He's still going to deal with them in the way that he needs to in the future, but he sends two of the greatest prophets in the history of the Bible. He sends Elijah and he sends Elisha in the midst or in the time frame where the people of God who were supposedly were supposed to worship God, called themselves followers of Yahweh, were no longer following him. God still sends two of the greatest prophets to them to turn their back to him. He sends them Elijah and he sends them Elisha. You might have heard of Elijah. Elijah was the one that called down fire from heaven. He's the one that, that challenged Jezebel. He said it's not raining for three and a half years. It is this, this, this Elijah that shows up at the Mount of Transfiguration during Jesus' time before Jesus is making his uh, trek all the way down to the cross. It is this Elijah. But not only is it this Elijah, it is his, it is his protege. His name is Elisha. And Elisha is following in the steps of Elijah, but he has a double portion of everything Elijah has because he's faithful to the end. See how amazing this is? That this is a country that is turned their back on God, but then God still sends them two of the best prophets. But in a situation like this, the Bible tells us while Israel to the north is being attacked by Aram in the north, which is modern day Syria, um, the Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 1 that the king of Aram, Syria, had great admiration for Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him, through him, the Lord had given Aram great victories. You see that? The Lord has given the victory to Aram through this man. So God is using this nation, Aram, to sort of judge the northern kingdom, Israel, and he's giving a general named Naaman success over Israel. Some people call him Naaman. Some people call him Naaman. Naaman. I don't smoke that no more. Naaman. <laughs> Naaman. I like to call him Naaman. Let's just make it easy. Let's call him Naaman. And so Naaman, Naaman is being used by God. But through Naaman, a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. He's got leprosy. He's highly decorated, highly respected. Everything's going great for him. He's got a, he, he's got a heavy resume. Uh, he is the most wanted. He is revered like nobody's business. The king loves him so much, but he has leprosy. It says in verse 2 that at this time the Aramean raiders invaded the land of Israel online. Watch this, Sweden. And among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. So you see that? She was a captive from war and she was trafficked up north into Syria. So one day, the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria, and he would heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman told the king what the young girl had said from Israel said. Go and visit the prophet, the king of Aram told him. I will send a letter of introduction for you to take to the king of Israel. So Naaman started out carrying as gifts 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold and 10 sets of Gucci. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Out of my league, Gucci clothing, verse 6. And then the letter of the king said, of it, to, to Israel said, With this letter, I present my servant Naaman. I want you to heal him of his leprosy. Well, when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, this man sends me a leper to heal? Am I God that I can give life and take it away? I can see that he's just trying to pick a fight with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard the king of Israel had torn his clothes in dismay, he sent this DM to him on Instagram. He said, why are you mad? Fix your face. No, 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 no. Something like, huh? What are you talking about? I have no idea. 
I know, I'm, I'm on the cusp of not understanding something. I'm getting older. But then it says this. He says, why are you so upset? Send Naaman to me and he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel. I love this passage of scripture. We're going to have to pick it up because I just read a little bit further than I wanted to. I love this passage of scripture. Here you have this man who is highly decorated. Here you have this man that God is using against his own nation because he's trying to get his nation to come back to him. And so he uses a military um, personnel, a, a man named General Naaman. And I told you, this guy's resume was incredible. He had everything going right for him. Everything was going right except one thing was wrong with his life. Everything was going great. Everything was going good. But there was this one area of his life. And it's leprosy. Leprosy is a condition of the skin that a lot of people do not survive leprosy. Leprosy, in Hawaii, we were well acquainted with leprosy, my sister, because in leprosy, the, we had, when you had a leper colony, you would have to round up the people from that leprosy, and then you would put them in a quarantine situation. I mean, quarantine is not a 2020 word. Quarantine is an old word. And that word goes all the way back to even before the 1800s when they put them on Kalaupapa Peninsula in Mol the island of Molokai, and they lived there. And so they didn't have their property anymore. This is your new property. This is where you live. God raised up a man named Father Damien. Father Damien used that opportunity to love the people of Kalau Papa Peninsula, and he himself eventually contracted leprosy because leprosy is a communicable disease. It's not because, oh, I need to wash my hands. I need to wipe it down with Lysol. It's because if you sneeze, someone can get, oh, my gosh. And so now he's got leprosy. Can you imagine the isolation that he has to live under? That it is, it, it is crazy because sometimes you think, oh, it might have been just eczema. No, no, no. Eczema is bad. This is worse. This thing will kill you. This thing will kill you. Oh, I got something. No, just, eat a, just eat a vegan lifestyle. You're going to be okay. All your complexion is going to be great. I tell you what, he has tried every therapy, every essential oil, every doTERRA. He smells like lavender and oregano at the same time. His wife is saying, give me your feet. I want to rub it on your feet. He's like, I'm done with this. Don't touch me anymore. I don't want you to get sick. He's alone with his thought. He's alone by himself. He's got people who are giving him a distance, but not a lot of people know what the condition that he has, because if they knew what he had, nobody would want to be around him. And there are times in my life, in your life, that you've got something under the surface. There's something just under the skin. It is something that's rubbing people the wrong way. It's even rubbing you the wrong way. And if people knew what would happen, I wonder how many people would hang with us and be that five. And it's in this place and in this time that this man is dealing with something, not just on the surface. He's dealing with something on the inside. Something is not right. Something's hurting him on the inside. He can't hug his wife anymore. He can't be intimate with her. He can't be, he can't be with his kids. He might have grandkids. He, 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 he finally has to tell his employer. He finally has to open up his medical records because you don't have to do that anymore. But he finally has to tell them that I've got this condition and I understand if you want to let me go. I understand if you got to send me to a villa up to the north. But I, can't, I just wanted you to know that I'll take every precaution. I don't know how I got this. A lot of people in Israel have this, but I got it. But he loved him so much. And he comes to him with a solution. The solution is a little girl, a little girl who has the goodness of her heart, who could say to her, could say as an, as an Israeli victim at this, a Jewish Hebrew victim at this time, she could say, I hope you die out of that thing. I'm not going to tell you. I know there's a man, a man in Israel that can heal you. I'm not going to tell you. But no, God has done a work on this young girl's heart. And she says, I wish my master would see the man of God in Samaria. And he would be healed. I wish. Praise God for the people who think out loud, who wish out loud. Praise God for the people like, you know what I'm talking about? The people who have played what we think are small roles but end up being huge roles in our life. Thank God for the little girls. Thank God for the bit role players. In Hawaii, everybody wants to be an actor. I got to ask you, do you want to be an extra for what? How much money is in it? You know, you mean an extra? CSI, you know, there's a Hawaii Five O. Do you want to be an extra? What does an extra do? They just sit down and drink coffee, and then they, if they're in the shot, they're in the shot. I said, no speaking role, no speaking role. Nah, never mind, speaking role only. Anyway. But there's a girl with a bit role that makes a huge impact. If she doesn't suggest this, I wish my dad would come to church. Oh, gosh. Oh, I wish my, my, I wish my best friend would come to church. If I could just get him to church, I wish. You know what? It's amazing what God can do when you wish. I wish. The mother, the wife overhears it, tells the husband. The husband tells the king. The king says, yes. Take a letter. Let me put my signet in it. Here's, here's all the gold and silver we can muster. Get a military escort. You get, you get men in the front. You got men in the back. You're going to go on your chariot. You're going to go down there, and I'm going to send you. It's a two-and-a-half-day journey to get there, but I promise you it'll be worth it because I'm going to send you to the king of Israel. 
The king of Israel sees him and says, who is this guy? Who is this guy? What are you doing sending your general who's got leprosy? This is like a communicable disease. This is a weapon that is being sent from your country to my country. And then he begins to have an emotional breakdown. An emotional breakdown. He says, I can't heal him. I can't heal him. But then Elisha, the prophet, hears all about it. Send him to me. Send him to me. And he will know that there is a God in Israel. So after two and a half days of journey, he goes to Samaria. And sometimes my mind would think, oh, beautiful rolling hills of Israel and nice countryside and sheep and lamb and whatnot. No, no, I did the study. Samaria is a city, and he had to go into the city, and his three-story buildings, two-story buildings, having to take his military entourage through intersections coming down this way. In my imagination, he got snipers on the top there ready with arrows. Okay, we got you. We got you. We got you, general. He's clear, 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 clear. And all of a sudden, he gets there, and the Bible tells us, I don't want to act it out. I want to read it out. Come on, somebody. <coughs> Verse 9. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house, the prophet. Because the king can't help you. The king can't help you. The government can't help him. Only Jesus can help him. All that gold, all that silver, thank God he didn't take it. Give me the gold, give me the silver. I can't do anything for you. Anyway. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha sent a messenger to him with this message. Wait, wait, you don't come to the door. He sends a messenger. He sends the butler. He sends the butler and the butler says, go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. Good day. Door slams. Verse 11, but Naaman was angry and he stalked away. And watch this. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought I would certainly come to meet me. I said, I expected him to have wave his wand over the leprosy. Call on the name of the Lord, his God, his God, and heal me. And aren't the rivers of Damascus and Abana and Farpar better than any of these rivers? You see the arrogance. Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned away and went in a rage. You know, when it comes to miracles, I found in my life three or four things that stop me from getting a miracle in my life. Number one, number one, expectations. I thought, I thought you were going to, th I thought it was your turn. I thought, I thought, I thought, I, th I, th I thought you would have acknowledged this by now. I thought you would have known who I am. I thought you would have seen the insignias. I, I thought, I, I thought you must not know about me. You must not know about me. I thought, I thought guarantee that you would know who I am. And I'm coming down here. I've come so far away. I'm from two and a half mile, two, a two and a half day journey. You know how hot it is in this thing? I'm irritated. I'm angry. In fact, I've been given a death sentence, but I can't tell anybody. And I'm going through all of this. And now you tell me you won't even come and meet me at the door. You give me a prescription and say, take two of these and call me in the morning. He's leading off in a rage. Number one, he had expectations. Oftentimes, you're going to get upset in life. Because why? Because you had expectations. I thought Johnny Heinrichs was going to call me. I thought, you know, I thought that I'd be further up in my, my journey of life right now. I expected and I thought that I would, I, I would own my house by now, not renting right now. I thought that our marriage was so much better than what it is right now. I, I thought there's so many th expectations that we have. But if we could just get you to the Jordan, if we can just get you to the church, if we can just get you to the river, if we can just get you there, because I know, because I'm, I'm a lot like Naaman. I know I look cool. Like, he's a cool Hawaiian. He don't get upset. Oh, no, no, no. Just under the surface. And if you just like me, if there's just something just under the surface, eventually comes up. And it rears its ugly head. And you either are paying collateral, the cost of collateral damage, or you've got to apologize to a whole lot of people. Which is nothing wrong with that. But you have to. Naaman is on this journey. He is two and a half days here. Another five hours here. Another three hours there. And now you want me to go jump dunk in the river seven times to the Jordan. Another 30 miles away. One more day. One more day. And this, these kinds of times you have expectations. You have entitlement. And you're highly inconvenienced. I find that when we're inconvenienced, this is where we lose our 
We lose our, we, 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 our fuse is lit. But you've got to, number one, respect and honor the advice of people who are for you. The girl said, I wish. He goes, I thought. But let me see what those men say to him. Verse 11, he's upset. He went away in a rage. And verse 13, it says, but his officers tried to reason with him and said, sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? In other words, if he said, do something crazy, like drink this thing or do that thing and then come back, it's worse. No. So you should certainly obey him when he says simply go and wash and be healed online. You should just obey. You should just obey. You should just listen to God. You should just listen to the word of the Lord. If we were to obey God more, how much better life would be. Instead of, it's too complicated for me. Or I can't do that. I don't want to do that. But here's the, gift. here's the deal. He says, go and wash and be cured. So, the bit players who play big roles are powerful. I wish. He says, I thought. And they suggest that he can go. There's so many good things about Naaman, but there's one thing. Well, actually, now there's two. One thing is his leprosy. What's your leprosy? What's your leprosy? What's the one thing? If, out of all the great things that, go, that you've got going for yourself, what's that one thing that can trip you up? God wants to get you to the river. If he could just get you to the river. What's that one thing? Now, it's not just the leprosy that you might have or the leprous condition of a, a heart necessarily, but maybe is it really an anger issue? Because sometimes, man, we've, in the last three years, it's more angrier than ever before. It's crazy how the anger in, the low-grade anger, the, the, the low fever, the 99.9 fever, degree fever. Not the 102 always angry, but I'm talking about the night. It's just, just above it, just above it. And God wants to get you to the river. If he can just get you to the river, I can tell you this. If God could just get me to church a long time ago when I was when I was a lot younger, some of you know my story, and Aunt, uh, Pastor Leanne said, Mike, please tell your testimony. I said, again? She goes, yes, again, because there's a lot of people who've never met you before. I said, okay, because always, they always sent me to San Marcos. And so I said, how come I never get Johnny Heinrichs? Why well, I always got Dr. Matt? <laughs> so now they finally get to come here, and I love Dr. Matt, but, man, I tell you, Johnny and me. But anyway, I, was, I, was, uh, I graduated, like I, I come from a small town. Uh, my cousin knows how small the town was. It was so small, there was no stoplight. Was, yeah, that's how small it was. It, it, had, it had four stop signs. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, it was like maybe a dozen stop signs. Uh, it was a small town in, in, on the big island of Hawaii. I graduated from high school, and I went to University of Hawaii. Um, and I was so excited to go to University of Hawaii. I was, I was scared, but at the same time, so much freedom. So I'm like, wow, that's a lot of freedom. That's a lot of freedom. And so I hardly went to school. I played basketball, but maintained my grades. Come on, somebody. I joined, I joined the Air Force ROTC program. Um, my, my, the colonel loved me. I was in my second year of college. He said, We're gonna, you, you want to be a pilot? I said, I do. He said, come. He says, but you're dating that girl. You shouldn't be dating her. I'm like, who are you to tell me that? And he's like, well, he's just a colonel. Anyway, and I, 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 I dated the girl. And this is my first real girlfriend, my first real girlfriend. I had girls that I liked growing up. I just want to make that very, very clear. And girls that I liked, but I was always a year younger. That made me a little bit shorter. So all the good girls were taken, okay? <laughs> and in a small school, they're not a lot. So this, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, take that off the video, please. <laughs> it, might come and hurt, it might hurt me one day. So, I, so when I finally go to the University of Hawaii and I, I, I fall in love with this girl. Um, so now I'm in the Air Force ROTC program. Life is going good. I got asked to join the University of Hawaii basketball team as a walk-on. Let's make, make it clear. As a walk-on. One year guarantee. After that, no guarantee. And then I find out that I'm going to be a father. <laughs> you just heard everybody, ooh. <laughs> and, and, and I never heard the song before, but if this song existed, how many of you like country music? I like country music. I like country music. And I just heard the song two years ago, Kenny Chesney, There Goes My Life. <laughs> there goes my life. There it goes. There it goes. Adios. There goes your life, Mike. Good job. My mom said, your life just got 10 times harder. She was lying. It was 20 times harder. <laughs> I became a single father. I didn't become a single father. I, I, we, got, we, we got married. And at the age of 19, I quit school. I worked, uh, I, I worked three jobs to make one job. 
I was hustling. I was angry. I was upset. I, I had purpose. Now I don't have purpose. I don't know what am I doing with my life. Where do I belong? I don't really, I'm, I'm trying to figure out identity. Even I don't know what my identity is at this point. And I know I'm a male. That's for sure. And so I'm having challenges. <laughs> I prove that. And I'm having challenges. You're pulling it out of me. You're pulling it out of me, Balboa. <laughs> and I was having challenges with my future. And then her mother didn't want to be married anymore, didn't want a baby anymore. And so she left us both and I, my daughter was abandoned and I became an instant single dad like that. It was rough. It was rough. And, I, and, and two sides to every story, but it also takes two people to make it work. And so for, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm angry. I'm homicidal and suicidal. I'm having a hard time. I, I don't, uh, do I even need to be here? But I've got this little girl, and I can't. I have to stay here because who else? I, you know, I imagined my funeral. I thought it out. What would my, I, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't see my mom and my dad blaming themselves. I couldn't see my siblings going, what, what, what could we, we didn't know. All of, the, we, all of this, and I stopped, and I said, no, no. I got to get myself better. Then my, I would work all these other jobs, and my friend Brandon would say, man, if I could only get Mike to church. If I can make Mike and Courtney to church, if I can get them to church. And I remember, here's a photo of me and Courtney at that time. I took this photo. Um, it looks like I'm 15, yeah? Right. I was actually 20. It's actually 20. She's a year and a half. And I take that photo. I took that photo because I didn't know if I would make it. And I wanted her to have a picture. And my friend Jerry Morneau took the photo. He was a waiter at the restaurant I worked at, and he took the photo for me because he was a photographer. He was okay. He's an okay photographer. But anyway, he did that photo. You can take the picture down, please. Thank you. And I remember my friend Brandon says, Mike, you need Jesus. It was the last thing I needed to hear. Don't tell me what I need. He's like, yeah, but you need him. I'm like, okay. And he kept bugging me, come to church. I don't want to go to church. You know what it takes to get one person to church the first time? It takes a lot. So if you're here for the first time, come on, welcome, man. You made it. You made it. Hey. If I've, if I've irritated you, I apologize. Pastor John will be preaching next week, okay? <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't all awakened. They let me preach this weekend. And, and if you, and if you, I'm not too much to stomach, I understand. Uh, you're going to love him better next week. So anyway, let me, I'll finish and then you can go watch your game. So here we go. <laughs> My friend Brandon kept irritating me and bugging me to go to church. I don't want to go to church. Stop telling me about your church. He starts telling me all about his church. I don't want to go to church. Stop it, Brandon. Enough. Finally, he went from begging to bribing. <laughs> come on, Mike, one time. If you come one time, I'll buy you breakfast. One time, I'll buy you breakfast. And I was like, I wanted to see how much I could get out of this breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> when you're a single dad, you live, you know, you know what I'm saying? You're, it's not, you don't have a lot of money. And finally, he says, Mike, I'll buy you breakfast. I said, all right, I'll go. Then get off my back after this, okay? I'll give you one shot. I'll give you one shot. Some of you guys have said that to the person sitting next to you. I'll give you one shot. The husband said, I'll give you one time. And you're, going like, and you're sitting next to him going, don't ruin it. Anyway, <laughs> I went one time. I walked into that church for the very first time. They had worship music like this, their version, 1990s version. They had overhead projectors. It was, I called it karaoke worship, follow the words. But they had me on song too. Because I had never seen worship words like that before. I would never seen, I love you, I need you, you're my God, exalting stuff. And by the time the preacher came up on the stage, I didn't even know what he was going to say. I was already, God was already moving. I'm a very logical person. I know you can tell. <laughs> I'm not that emotional. I know you can tell. But by logic and by emotion, I already knew that this was the right thing. It's what I've been looking for all my life. I grew up in a level of church that didn't even tell you what John 3.3 3 was. John 3.16, you must be born. I didn't even know. All I, I, and I'm not dissing it. I'm just telling you, I had very limited knowledge. I mean, I had memorization. But I didn't. It was here and it never went here. And then when I went to church for the first time in Hawaii, it went from here, boom. And now all of a sudden, I realized... This is why I'm here. God loves me. He forgives me. It's not all my fault. I've made mistakes. I, I've got an anger issue. But God can heal me. And so when I look at Naaman, if I can just get him to the Jordan, they're thinking. We can just get him to the Jordan. 
We're thinking in this room, if we can just get you to church, if you can just get your brother-in-law to church, if you can just get your best friend to church, if you can get your daughter to come to church, and if we could just, I'll buy you breakfast, we'll go to the mall, we'll spend a lot of money, it's going to be okay if you just come to church. And all that begins to happen. It's for real. You know why? Because we know that if we can get you to the Jordan, which is a picture of the healing power of God, it is the purity of the Holy Spirit. It is new beginnings. It is all of that. If we can get you to the Jordan, God will deal with that. And I could just take the keyboards, please, because the more Mr. Tang plays, the better I become. All right, what a key, what a, what, 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 just, just, just keys for now. What an anointed keyboard player. He is good. And, and look, watch this. Here it is. Naaman became angry. His officers tried to reason with him. So Naaman went down in verse 14 to the Jordan River. We got him to the Jordan. Naaman goes down to the Jordan. After all the run around, the rigmarole, the sent from that department to that department, from that organization, now you got to go to this one. And finally, he's at that place, and he's irritated. He's fuming. You know, what, you know what his emojis look like? This is what his emojis look like if he had a phone. <laughs> Some people at the airport, every time I fly, they're at the ticket counter. <laughs> you can take that down. And finally, he gets to the Jordan. Military entourage, front, back, chariot, gets out. They help him out. They can't touch him. But his men come behind him, start to undo his, his uniform. His, they get down to the chain mail. They remove his helmet for him. They remove his tunic and his scarf that begins to reveal the thing that he had been trying to hide the last few years. And all of a sudden, his boys, his men, his officers look, no, we get it. Now we understand. Because what you won't reveal, God cannot heal. Oh, it's an inconvenience, of course. We went 30 miles this way and then 30 miles that way in two and a half days. And Scott stood up at the door and meet an English-British butler. Now here we are in this place and... We get it. And I want you to know that you are not an inconvenience. If we got to find a therapist, it's not inconvenient. If we got to get a third opinion, it is not inconvenient. If we got to take you to another treatment center, it is not an inconvenience. If we got to take you to volleyball practice again, it is not an inconvenience. Whatever we need to do to get you to the Jordan, it is not an inconvenience. Because when you get in that water... And Carrie Underwood starts to sing. No, just kidding. But when you get in that water, he walks down. Now he's naked, bare before everybody. All secrets gone. He starts to walk up to the water. And he looks at this. He goes, oh my gosh, this is dirty. This is not that clear. Have you ever been to the Jordan River? Yeah, the north is kind of clear, right? The north, the middle by the nation of Jordan, not so clear. This right by Jericho, not so clear. Because all the sediment, and then it's headed to the Dead Sea. He's probably looking at this water. It's, I'm not going in that. I'm, I'm going in the water. The man of God said seven times, I'm finally going to obey and get rid of my stubborn self. And he gets to the river. Full immersion? Full immersion, sir. Presbyterian sprinkle won't do? No sprinkling, sir. <sighs> Steps into the water. Oh, my gosh, I can't even see my feet. I don't even see my toes. Goes chest high, does his first air squat. Here he goes. Air squat underwater, come back up. Oh, it's so cold here. <laughs> Looks around. Do it again. Two. Goes back down, still the same. Three. Comes back up. Body's not changing, but attitude is. Looks around. Is that a dead animal there? <laughs> On the side of the river. Five comes back up. This is actually kind of nice. I'd like to stay here. My wife wants to do mas massage envy with me. I think I might do that next time. <laughs> Seven comes back up. 
Finally, the number seven is the number for perfection. Seven times. He comes back up and the Bible says that his body was as clean as a baby's body. So, come on. If we can just get you to the river. Then, verse 15, then Naaman and his entire party went back to find the man of God another 30 miles back. And they stood before him. And finally, Elisha meets with him. Finally. And he says, now I know that there's no other God in the world except in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servant. But Elisha replied, as surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept any gifts. And, the, the, and though Naaman urged him to take the gift, Elisha refused. And then Naaman said, all right, but please allow me to load two of my mules with earth from this place and I will take it back home with me. From now on, I will never again offer burnt offerings or sacrifices to any other God except the Lord. And then he says in verse 18, yes. He says, however, may the Lord pardon me in this one thing. When my master, the king, goes into the temple of God, Rimon, to worship there and leans on my arm. May the Lord pardon me when I bow to. In other words, he says, I need earth. I need dirt from Israel to create my own altar in Syria. And I want to worship Yahweh from Syria on Jewish Hebrew dirt. And that's what he does. And he says in verse 19, he says, go in peace. And Elisha said, so Naaman started home again. Great thing I love about this is there's always... A circle back. He gets healed and he comes back to thank him. Reminiscent of Jesus' words in Luke chapter 4 where he healed 10 lepers, only one comes back. And he mentions Naaman, he said people all over Israel had leprosy, but who does God heal? God heals a Syrian, a Syrian, a foreigner, someone not from their country. God healed. Praise God. So, God saves me at the age of 21. Still single by the age I'm 25. Wear my, wear my ring the whole time. And after one year of being married to the Lord, I take off my ring. Four years, excuse me, four years of singleness and celibacy. Yeah, I was single and celibate for four years. Some of you say, I'm single. Yeah, were you celibate? <laughs> anyway, that's not for me to know. It's between you and God. But single and celibate. And finally, my daughter's getting older, and I need a wife, and I don't have time to go check out, you know, I don't want to check out the girls at the church. You know what I'm saying? That's weird. They don't want to creep. They don't want to join the internship program to hook up. Just kidding. Just, just kidding. It's a good place to find a, a godly wife and a godly husband, I'm just saying. But we didn't have that where I grew up in church and not my, when I got saved. So... I prayed. I said, Lord, Jesus, I need a wife and my daughter needs a mother. And I promise you, you think I'm joking. I'm going to make this up because I've been joking the whole time. But serious. And I said, Lord, if I can get married again, I don't have time to look for her. I don't want to go to places I went before because that didn't work. I got to find her in the church. But I don't want to, you have to, can you please bring her to me? And I heard P Pastor Jack Hayford say, pray specifically. So I prayed specifically, God, can she be five foot seven? Five foot seven. Can she be gorgeous Chinese, please? Gorgeous Chinese. Gorgeous Chinese. And then, can she love Jesus more than me? And you know what? That's a tall order. It's a tall order. Five foot seven, gorgeous Chinese, and loves Jesus more than me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can comprehend the things that God has for those who love him. I'm not going to tell you how we met, but we met at church. Got married in a year and a half, and it's been 30 years. And it's been the best 30 years of my life. Praise God. Can you see? That's the photo. This is my family. This is my daughter, Becca. Rebecca, I gave her away in marriage last year. This is my daughter, Courtney, and her husband, Jason. They live in Portland. They live in Portland, Oregon. They hardly smile. I understand why. It's Portland. <laughs> they smize. They smize. This is my youngest daughter, Karis. She's sitting next to my granddaughter, Bowie. My, my daughter, Karis, next to my son-in-law, Elijah. That, the, the, the one shorter than Courtney. 
She's a freshman next year on a volleyball scholarship at Pepperdine University. That's my brother. That's my mother. My dad went to be with the Lord two years ago. If I, if I wasn't here, this would not happen. And if I didn't get to church, and if I didn't get to the Jordan, these things would never happen. You can take them off. Would you close your eyes and bow your heads with me, please? I want to pray for two kinds of prayers. The first one is, Mike, I'm like you. I can get angry. I want it to stop with me. I blow up. We've been under a lot the last decade or three years or whatever. I've got PTSD. I've got CTE. I've been in situations that most people haven't been in, and so I've tried every treatment. I'm still in one right now. But you're believing that God can heal you with it and with it and through it. Or maybe you've tried every opportunity to get better in every area of your life and you still feel like you've hit this thing. If we could just get ourselves to the Jordan today, things would be different. At the count of three, I want you to raise your hand and I'm going to pray that prayer all in one. And if that's you, you're just like me, man. You're battling with this from time to time. I want you to raise your hand at the count of three. Here we go. Come on. God can't heal what you won't reveal. One, two, three. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. Come on, hands up going on. No shame in that game. Come on. No shame in that game. Hands going up all over this place. Praise the Lord. Come on. That's awesome. Okay, you can put your hand up. This prayer that I want to pray for is for people here who have never given their lives to Jesus. Maybe you had a religion. Maybe you had a religious understanding. You maybe had a different philosophy. Maybe you just grew up differently, but you never heard that you must be born again. Or you heard it before and you thought it was just a brand or a branch of Christianity. But I'm here to tell you today that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And if that's you today, that if God was stirring with you and you've never made a commitment to Jesus Christ, you are online or you are in person and you're ready to take, take the step, you're ready to say, I'm going to follow Jesus. I don't know what that looks like. I don't even know the Bible or I want to know more. Or I grew up in it and I walked away from it. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done. If today is the day that you're saying, I'm dedicating my life to Jesus, then at the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to throw it up in the air real high, above your ear, over your head. Put your elbow as your, as your head level. And at the count of three, from the front to the back, to the left to the right, get ready. Here we go. One, he will never let you down. Two, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Here we go. One, two, three. Put your hand up if that's you. Says, Mike, that's who I want and that's what I want. Mike, that's who I want and that's what I want. Put your hands up in this room here today. Hands are going up all over the room here. Here we go. Come on. They're counting. Keep them up, please. Keep them up, please. Keep them up, please. I got one right there. Two. God bless you. And three and four and five and six and seven right there. God bless you. Eight in the corner right there. I got nine right here. Ten right there. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eight. 18, come on somebody, 18, 19 people, 19 right there just went up. There's still time. There's still time. I'll wait another 20 seconds. I'll still wait another 20 seconds. You, come on, 21 right there. God bless you. 22, 22, amen. All right, I want everybody to put their hand. 23 just went up. I'm going to wait 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. 8, 7, 5, 24 just went up. 3, Two, one, amen. I want everybody to repeat this prayer after me. Can the, everybody in the room repeat this prayer? Especially the 24, 25 people that just raised their hands to surrender their life to Jesus. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, today I surrender and give you my life. Thank you for loving me before I first loved you. I'm born again. The old is past. The new has begun. I'm a new creation. In Christ Jesus, created to serve you and to bring you glory with the new life you give me. So I repent of all of my sins. Wash me clean by the blood of Jesus. Set me on a solid rock to follow you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen. Wow. What an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com 
or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.